to the TBA interview series. Um, I'm delighted to be here with Barry O'Leary, CEO of IBA Ireland. Barry, thank you very much for taking the time to, to join the Trinity Business alumni this evening. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, you're going to speak to us tonight about foreign direct investment in Ireland and IBA's role in promoting foreign direct investment. What's the key message you'd like to deliver this evening? Well, I think the key message I'd like to deliver is despite the economic turmoil and despite the challenges that Ireland has had economically over the past couple of years, that we continue to perform very, very well from a foreign direct investment point of view. There's some statistics out today from IBM actually pointing to where Ireland is number one in the world for the value of foreign direct investment and number two for the number of jobs created per 100,000 of the population. So we're trying to give the message that Ireland is very much open for business. We're winning business not just from the large multinationals, but second tier and emerging companies as well. Very good. And where do you see these um, growth opportunities emerging from? What, what regions are, are hot at the moment? Well, the United States remains the largest market by far. About 72% of all foreign direct investment comes from the US. That's going to continue to be the case. We already have a very, very strong stock of foreign direct investment from the US. But we're investing an awful lot in new markets, places like China, India, Singapore, Brazil, uh, Russia, we've put resources there, but that's an investment for the future rather than the immediate delivery. Very good. And I noticed something in, in, in the paper earlier this week, the IMI NIB survey that indicated that almost half of Irish or multinational companies based in Ireland were considering growing their employment next year. Um, has Ireland in, turned the corner at this stage? Well, I think there are two things. The uh, multinationals are all dealing almost exclusively with the export markets and they're doing relatively well. And I think that will continue to be the case with a good pipeline of investments. But the biggest challenge for Ireland Inc. is to get a, a, the domestic economy, the domestic consumption going. So foreign direct investment will play a very important role, but it's important that we're firing on other cylinders in the economy as well. Very good. We're in Trinity College this evening and um a lot of innovation and a lot of startups. And I read in the Financial Times that the Dublin Docklands is, is, has been called the Silicon Docks due to all the gaming companies that are down there that are being attracted to the Docklands. How are you sourcing um, these, these gaming companies? Well, I think if we take the general digital media, digital co uh, digital content, which includes games, but it also includes the likes of the internet players. So Ireland has already won the top 10 global internet players, anybody from a Google, eBay, PayPal, down to a Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. And we've three of the top five games companies, uh, people like Activision Blizzard are in Ireland, EA, Electronic Arts, and Microsoft, as well as a whole host of medium to small companies in the game sector. It's one of the features that we try and do once we go after a sector is to get a very, very high market share from the leading players. Very good. And then snowballs from there. That's it. I think, yeah, you know, the fact that we have Facebook made it much easier for Zynga to make the decision because they were partners corporately back in Silicon Valley and the natural tendency was they followed. So there is a follower instinct one of the big challenges is, of course, to make sure we never miss a wave of areas. So areas like analytics and cloud computing would be very important to capitalize on those. And every few years, there's something new, and we have to make sure that Ireland as a country is attuned to what's happening there. Very good. Well, thank you very much for taking the time for the interview, and we look forward to hearing your, your, your speech this evening. And thank you very much once again for the invitation to address the team. Thank you.